Hey guys, Steve here. We are in a series of meditations and devotions on Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God and that I will be exalted in all the nations. That's what that's what the Psalm 46, verse 10 says. And a psalm that I've just read again this morning, uh, which has really helped me think this through, is Psalm 86. It's a psalm like many of the psalms of David, where there's trouble and trial and challenge and stresses and pressures. And, and in the middle of all this, David, we find out his prayer life and what's going on in his heart. And there's some absolutely fantastic things in here that we need to learn. The first one is this psalm seven times calls God Lord or Master or Sovereign. In other words, David, in the middle of his trials, is reminding himself seven times that God is sovereign. And so Alex Mattia, in his, in, in his, this is the book I was promoting before. It's a, it's a commentary on the whole Bible. And Alex Mattia, an Irishman, does the, uh, does, the Psalm 80, does the Psalms commentary. And he says he calls Psalm 86 the pillow of sovereignty. When we know God is sovereign, when the world around us seems really out of control, we're really grateful that he is still in control. He's still the Lord. He's still the sovereign. And he talks about how David therefore had a pillow on which to rest his head. When he didn't understand what was going on, he knew that God uh, did. And so uh, the psalm, in a sense, teaches us that we too need to continually seven times say, I'm not in control, you are. Lord, the world seems out of control, but you're, you've got it in control. Lord, I don't understand what's going on here, but you do. There's a continual reminder in our hearts that God really is in charge. We need to do that. We need to relinquish control and continually to remind ourselves that he is in control. And Mattia has this lovely insight that I've never seen. He says, this psalm is a protracted intercession, you know, prayer to God. The need, verse 14, the need is not specified until David first explored his relationship with God. So we don't actually get to the need. What, what's going on in David's life until verse 14? He spent 13 verses just exploring his relationship with God. And so then he, he says this, Matthias says this, at a deeper level, we may say that this prayer is more occupied with telling God about God. What an amazing insight about prayer. In prayer, we tell God about God. Why? Firstly, to give him praise and thanks. But secondly, because we need to hear it as we tell God. Um, and so he says this is a meditation on the divine nature, telling God rather than telling God about me. So in prayer, you can come and say, God, I want to tell you about me. That's OK. We can do that. But David has learned to tell God about God in prayer. That is an absolute gem of an insight about prayer. Come to prayer to know God, to thank him, to tell God about God, not to tell God about uh, me. Um, and we can therefore find that he is in control and that he is sovereign and that he has good things for us. And so in verse 11, uh, David then comes and says, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart that I may fear your name. And so Matthias says, verse 11 does not mean teach me how to get out of this trouble, but teach me while the trouble still rages to live your way. Give me a heart that's united for you and not, not double-minded, not, not trying to go here, there. No, I'm just in the trouble. I do want you to save me out of it, but I want you to teach me to live in it. Verse 11, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart that I may fear your name. So Psalm 86 is such a helpful psalm. In prayer, we tell God about God and we remind ourselves that he's sovereign and we ask him to teach us to live his way in the middle of trials. I hope that helps you. It's really helped me this morning as I've thought about my day and my week ahead. Okay, God bless you.